Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray, brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray as we talk outdoors, the fastest 90 minutes in outdoor radio programming in our 18th year, and this being the fourth Saturday. Uh, of course, that means uh, the bonus Wong as he uh, appears for the second time in one month. Good morning, uh, everybody. Yeah, there he is. He's got on his lose cap over there. He looks very dapper. And then, of course, uh, Vanishing Paradise has got on his uh, rattle trap shirt. Rattle trap. Yeah. Yeah. The year you were I born. Could find the one. year right. you were born is on the front of it, too. 64. I was not born in 64. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old, brother. I'm just checking on you, making sure you know the age and everything. He's a baby. We've aged him before. He is a baby. Yeah, I'm Bill Cooksey, of course. Uh, Bill Cooksey, the 12th, and everything else. Uh, hobbling around here. Injury. Uh, I saw his injury on on, uh, on Facebook, and I swear it was on the other leg on Facebook, and now it's it's moved over to... It was yeah. always on the right leg, always I on promise the right, you. But it better be on the right leg, yeah. right? Okay. Appreciate, it's on the correct one, too. Yes, appreciate Bill being here, too. Thank you for being with us. And, uh, you know, opening season, uh, the deer season for guns started last weekend in Tennessee. A lot of you Mississippi folks started hunting also. And, of course, over in Arkansas, they have such goofy seasons. I never know when it is deer season in Arkansas, but... Uh, <laughs> We've got a lot of, we've talked a lot about on Outdoors with Larry Ray, and Bill will verify this from the uh, environmental job that he has with Vanishing Paradise, that uh, conservation and things along this line. Uh, Chronic wasting disease has been a hot subject that we've mentioned many times. There has been uh, at least two reports in Mississippi, uh, a recent report, another one in Arkansas over in Johnson County, and we're trying to keep it out of Tennessee with stringent rules about uh, bringing uh, animals across the state line unless they've been deboned and uh, no, no, nothing's left just about to get them in here. And I know our good friend uh, Chris Knight at Shelby Forest Taxidermy keeps a handle on uh, how the deer season's going, not only from uh, the, the mounts that uh, if, you, if you've got a, mount, a deer that you want to get mounted, there's nobody better than Chris at Shelby Forest Taxidermy, but also... Uh, uh, even a European mount. So uh, we're going to talk to Chris right now a little bit about the deer. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Larry. All right, bud, let's talk now. So the season opened. Te- well, I mean, we've had the archery season. We've had the other parts of everything like that. From a taxidermy standpoint, uh, uh, have you uh, had some big deer brought to you already this season? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's uh, they're doing, I would say it's probably average year. Uh-huh. Um, Last year was an uh, above average year for the taxidermy industry, so uh, it's it's been fair, no complaints. All right, we'll uh, talk talk about it from the uh, standpoint of the of the chronic wasting disease. Uh, You've studied it, I know. So. Yeah, from our standpoint, from the taxidermy industry, um, I think it's somewhat overblown by the wildlife agencies because it's been around for over fifty years. I think and, Bill uh, Bill Cooksey has mentioned that before. Mm-hmm. We've been talking. Yeah, it, it didn't just happen last year, you know. So right. uh, yeah, exactly. And 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 I have to address it in a calm and logical manner. I think it helps the industry because it is an industry, uh, hunting and fishing world, as you well know. Yeah, and uh, that we need to maintain an industry, and we don't need to scare people out of it. Um, the taxidermy aspect it does reduce. The amount of work we get from out of the state. Yeah, it does, um, doesn't it? I've got many calls from Mississippi um, and a few from Arkansas and some from Missouri that I had to turn away uh, and have them process the, the, the mounts in, in that state. And uh, so you you lose income from that from that aspect. And I'm sure some processors are in that same boat. That uh, a lot of them that get, got stuff from Mississippi and Arkansas, but. You can't process them here anymore. Can't so. do it anymore. Yeah. No, sir. And uh, that uh, uh, from the, from the, and I know you have customers that not, not just from Tennessee that have been bringing you their mounts uh, uh, for many years. You've been in the business how long? Uh, Fifteen years. Fifteen years, and so you've seen this and known about CWD, and then uh, we tack on these restrictions. Uh, I know. From my friend Scott Stengel at Stengel Brothers, where I take my deer, 
out uh, near Somerville on Highway 64. He has uh, been forced to raise his prices. He's also been forced to give up uh, doing European mounts and now sends them to you. So talk about that. Well, the European mounts are uh, become a classic uh, and it's less expensive than a shoulder mount. And uh, uh-huh. there's um, a lot to be said for it. It gives you the skull and the head and uh, a lot of memories with it with, with a less, less expensive part of the tax So, And you're uh, doing them. You're still doing them. Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we do. So what do you tell the people would, when they're going to bring one to you? Um, there's not a whole lot of uh, prep work with uh, European mouth. They can just remove the head from the deer and bring the whole thing, and uh, we're good to go, and we take care from there. You take care from there. And this, is, yes, this has got to be in state, though. That's right. That's correct. From, from state to state. And, and that's... So if out of state, you would have to have um, the... The skull clean, ready. Remove yeah, the brains, yeah. those. Yes, eyes. yeah. It, it's almost like they they got to be operated on uh, <laughs> when it when it comes down right to it. So, yes, sir. Talk about a lot of uh, misconceptions or misinterpretation of the life of a taxidermist. <laughs> uh, why do you do it? Why do you? How, and how did you get into it? And is is it a is it a losing a, lo, a, a losing art? Do, are there young kids out there? What do you what do you tell? Because I, I you're an artist. I mean, I know you believe that, I, I, and I believe you are in what you do. So uh, talk about that as a taxidermist. Well, I uh, um, the country as a whole. You're kind of breaking yeah. up on us, Chris. Uh, I, I, I know the artist is trying to hear uh, exactly what you're saying. I don't know if you're. Uh, in a location that you can stick your head out the window or uh, or something else. And... There we go. There you go. That's I'll, better. I would say as, as the as whole, the young people don't want to do um, hands-on work anymore. Uh, <laughs> they do electricians. <laughs> yeah. And, and taxidermy is in a same boat. It's just hands-on work. Um, it does require a lot of dedication to it because it's a, it's a lifestyle uh, more than it's just a job. It is, so isn't it? We work we work seven days a week this time of year, and uh, it's uh, you, you work late hours and um, you know you, you're hunting and fishing time that you, you do. If you if you love the outdoors, your 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 time outdoors is greatly being a tax term because uh, you're taking in things at the peak of the hunting season. So yeah, you're, you're, you're yeah you, you're doing things. You've done some of that, haven't you, Bill? Well, I've never done any taxidermy, but I know quite a few of them. And I mean, and even know, like Pat, people Pat bringing Pitt. them by a duck camp. You yeah, know, they're, hey, yeah. can I drop some birds off? And, uh-huh. you know, he has to keep a freezer just, mm-hmm. you know, extra freezers just for that in places where he spends time. So what was your, what was the first animal you ever did? A squirrel. A squirrel. Oh, yes, sir. I was 14. I think it was probably one of the ugliest pieces there was on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've progressed. So, what's your favorite to do? Um, I like birds. Um, I thought I you did. You can be more creative with them, um, and uh, recreate the, the the life of the bird, and, and, and a lot more action in it than you can with a deer head. Or uh, and I like mammals also that you can like bobcats and coyotes that you can put them in an action scene uh-huh. and uh, make them look wildlike. That's the whole goal is to recreate the the likeness or life. Of the animal. Well, have you ever uh, turned down anybody with a certain critter they brought you? No, not really. I've done some strange things over the years, but uh, I I try to be uh, helpful with everybody. Okay. Do you do you do dogs? Um, not anymore. I used to do. I that, thought you man. did. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, there was a taxidermist in Arkansas that I once met that uh, when you went in his store, he said, "We don't do humans." And uh, yeah. that that was on a sign on the front of his door, and I yeah, said, "Okay, I, I understand yeah. that." But uh, the, the passion is there, and uh, and so uh, the deer season, the big mounts. What's uh, what's a big deer that's come to you? Uh, I would say a white class. A what? One eighty. A one eighty. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. That's that's, that's nice. Pretty that's nice a, deer. That's a nice. Imagine deer. what he'd been next year. Well, he might have yeah, been—he <laughs> might have been seven years old too. He might not have made it to next year. I got to look at that too. You know, I can't see his teeth 
from here, <laughs> yeah. you know. So it, it, it does that thing. Hey, Chris, thank you, buddy, for talking with yeah. us. Uh, folks, uh, give them how to get in touch with you, where you're located. Uh, you can call us at 914-938-3370 or it's on the web at shelbyforesttaxidermy.com. We're also on Facebook, Shelby Forest Taxidermy. That's it, Don't buddy. See. He's the best. Go to Chris Knight. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Have a great, Have a great one. Day. All right, Chris Knight. Uh, life of a taxidermy. I can. I'll never forget. Uh, I went with a guy with a. This taxidermist did it in his uh, in his kitchen, and I went with this Good friend of mine. Grief. Yes, it was. A, and so uh, we walked. The uh, you know this guy was cheap. I was with, and so we went went in there and we locked on the door. And he said, "Come on in." And uh, he was in the kitchen working on it, and I assume that was his daughter making out with some other man on the couch in the living room when we went in. And I, I said, uh, and it smelled awful in there. I don't know if that yeah. was them or working in the kitchen. But there's a lot of, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's as many maybe today as there used to be 20, right. 30 years ago. No, there aren't. The kitchen uh, taxidermists. Yeah, there, you know. there was some they're, half-wit taxidermist in every oh, small there town. There was. And yeah. I mean, they, were all, they all had a shingle hung out. They and, did, and they had a business card, and it always had blood on it. Do your you ducks know? for $25. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You mm-hmm. must have been the same guy I was. Yeah. I, I'm going to go tell you about who that guy was. All right, we're going to take a break, come back, and we're going to try. We're going to try to go to Kalamazoo, Michigan, and talk to the one and only KVD. What a better what what better person to talk to on the Thanksgiving holidays? I guarantee this guy is really thankful for the career that Bass Fishing has given him. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back on Outdoors, Larry. Mm-hmm. 